I look at Kenya today and I'm very sad. Even as an analyst, it's very hard work trying to analyze politics because you will say something, your honest opinion, analysis of a situation, and then somebody will respond, a very intelligent person, maybe with 10 degrees, a PhD or something like that. They'll respond in a complete tribal manner. The emotions which are tribal will rise up uh, inside them. And they'll say, no, Kumikucha, you're telling a lie. Your information is unverified, etc., etc., etc. Yeah? And then when you say something positive, or something they, they, they deem to be positive, yeah, which is usually uh, some bad luck that's going on on the other side, they will congratulate you and tell you, Kumekucha, well done. Your right information is so accurate. Thank you for enlightening us. You're so accurate. Blah, blah, blah. I'm really getting sick of it. And so I decided to do this recording to tell you the truth. Those who want to hear, skilizeni. Those who are not interested, that's still fine with me. But those who want to know where this deep hatred in our country came from, this deep hatred and rivalry between two main communities in our country, where it came from, those who want to know, you will know today. It is a very sad story. It's a story where this thing was used as a political weapon. And as usual, I look at it from both sides. I look at it even from the side of those who are perpetuating it, those who engineered the whole scheme. Yeah, because there's a good side to it. Yeah, but my view is that whatever good side there was to it was overshadowed by a curse they have left upon the nation of Kenya that will probably last forever. The curse of two Kenyans living in the same country, hating but hating each other so much that actually they, should, they could have been in two different countries. The curse of cheating ourselves that when one united Kenya when clearly we have two different countries, two very different republics. I dare call one republic the Republic of Kehes, and then the other republic, the Republic of Maseperes. Yeah, that's what we have in Kenya today. Very sad. Now I know most people hate history lessons, so let me just stick to the facts. I'll go very quickly where it all started. Yeah, early independence Kenya. The two major tribes in Kenya, the Lu and the Kikuyu, were firmly together. They were united in one purpose. And it looked like the bond between the two would never be broken. The colonial government had been defeated sensationally, using mainly thanks to the very, very crafty Tom Boyer, who had engineered negotiations with the colonial government and had somehow managed stage by stage and very carefully in a very carefully crafted plan to get Kenya into Lancaster House Conference where now the ind complete independence of Kenya was being dis discussed yeah he started just by uh, demanding more seats in the let go yeah and then when those more seats were demanded independence was demanded it's as simple as that I'll not bore you the details but that's what happened so coming into new independent Kenya President Jomo Kenyatta, Akikui was the president. Vice president was Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, father to Raila Odinga. This was more than a relationship between a president and his vice president. It went deeper than that. The two were very close. You see, Jomo Kenyatta owed Jaramogi Oginga Odinga a lot. Jomo Kenyatta was rotting away in prison. Nobody was interested in him. He had been imprisoned on trumped up charges that of being a member of Mau Mau when actually the man all his life had professed non-violence. In fact, Mau Mau had even threatened Jomo Kenyatta's life many times. And yet, a court of law had proved him guilty of being a leader, not even just a member, a leader of Mau Mau, which was a total, total lie. Okay? But uh, Jomo's arrest uh, was rotting away in prison, forgotten. When Jaramogi Oginga Odinga stood up in the LECO, the parliament at that time, and told a shocked house, we Africans do not want independence until Jomo Kenyatta is released immediately. Now, that statement shocked the house, and in fact some people asked, Jomo who? Who is that? Yeah, he had been forgotten. To cut a long story short, that statement by Jaramogi Oginga Odinga triggered a chain of events that led to the release of Jomo Kenyatta. A 
and soon after that the independence of Kenya. So this was a very firm friendship, very firm. It didn't look like it would be broken. And sitting in Kenya those days, if somebody had come and told you that in future these two tribes are going to be bitter rivals in the country called Kenya, they'd have probably laughed you away. Yeah? But a few events were to follow in quick succession that changed all that. As I say, politics is a very dirty game. Very dirty. Now the government, the inner circle in the government of Jomo Kenyatta realized one thing. That the government was not secure because there were real threats surrounding the presidency of Jomo Kenyatta. The biggest threat was one man we keep talking about. One man who you cannot talk about the history of Kenya without mentioning. A man called Thomas Joseph Odiambo Boya, or simply known as Tom Boya. This is the man who had single-handedly led the country into independence with his crafty negotiation skills, his correct reading of the political uh, temperatures abroad and where it mattered and where the people had the power to make a change. Yeah, He read all the signs correctly and delivered independence to Kenya. He was a real threat because if he had been able to grapple with the mighty colonial government, oh, a local uh, Kenyan government of locals would be nothing to him. And that was the big fear in the inner Kenyatta circle. Okay? But there was no such thing as low unit in the government. There was no tribalism up to that point, at least not to that extent. Because Tom Boyer and uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga were bitter rivals. Okay? Jaramogi, the older man, thought that Tom Boyer was young, a young man in a big hurry and very arrogant. Okay? And he felt that the younger man should at least respect him more. Yeah? Tom Boyer, on the other side, was cosmopolitan, young, with a bright political future ahead of him, and he had no time for the older, traditional Jaramogi. He viewed Jaramogi as somebody who would have no agenda for Kenya, no agenda for the new Kenya just coming. He viewed him as being slow in being able to realize what was happening around the world and how Kenya would fit into it all. But it was a foreign source, an outside source, that triggered the troubles within the young Kenyan government. You see, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga was receiving support from Russia. And at that time, Russia was Russia. Because there was a Cold War going on, mainly between America and Russia. And Americans were very nervous about having strong Russian influence in East Africa. And most notably in such a strategic country like Kenya. They were very determined to completely root out that influence. Now up to this point, the government of Mzejomo Kenyatta had played their cards intricately and perfectly and very well, in a very commendable manner. They had announced and professed to the whole world that Kenya was a country which was non-aligned. Yeah? We were not aligned either to the west or to the east. We were just a young African country, ready to develop at a rapid rate and ready to discuss and do business with either side. The Americans did not like that. Not even the British. In fact, the whole West did not like that. Because they knew where Russian influence is involved, it tends to overwhelm all other interests. Okay? The Russians on the other side were keen to keep the appointment, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, very close to the seat of power. Because they saw this as a perfect opportunity for them to get a foothold on a continent where, which had been elusive to them for decades. According to classified CIA documents released recently, declassified and released recently, the CIA led a very spirited operation with the cooperation of the Jomo Kenyatta government to get rid of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. The idea was to get rid of Russian influence in the country. And the way to do that was to remove Jaramogi Oginga Odinga from anywhere near the seat of power and to make him politically irrelevant. Now in the next part of this recording we shall see exactly how that was done and then we shall see, we shall also discuss the major operation that led to the hatred we have in the country of Laos today. The hatred that is so deep that a Kenyan can stand up and say it is not possible. Not a Kenyan, many Kenyans can stand up and believe in their hearts it is not possible for Law to be president. As if Law is not a human being. Anyway, catch you in the next part of this series. You know what to do by now. Just click on that uh, link which is on the top left hand corner of your screen 
and it'll take you directly to part two of this recording. See you there. Thank you. Chris Kumekucha here.